John Bonham, Keith Moon, Ian Page, Mitch Mitchell, who was the king of the 70s rock drums. It's difficult to give a definitive answer, but we can consider more objective aspects like skills and evaluate other matters like groove, creativity, interplay. By the end of the video, we will assign all these prizes. Now, what's the best way to evaluate skills? By checking drum solos, because that's when a drummer needs to use basically all of his skills. It's the ultimate stress test. I choose some representative snippets of their typical feats. Let's start with Keith Moon. Okay. Notice the melodic uh, ideas, but some precision as well. Okay, we can see technique is not very solid, but timing is quite good, and about improvisation, there are some good melodic ideas. Let's go to Mitch Mitchell. A lot of rudiments and jazz stuff. Melodic ideas, some imprecision. We can see good improvisation ideas with solid timing and some inaccuracy about technique. Let's go to John Bonham. Notice the hi hat for limbs coordination. Some inaccuracy, and here it's very crispy. We could hear a slight drop in timing in the middle, but what we heard is very tough about technique. And Bonham is using hi-hat and the other three drummers are not really doing that during the solo. So that's kind of tough about coordination and Bonham is the best in this skill. Let's hear Ian Pace. That's, that's really fast. Speed, technique. Yes, Ian Pace is very solid about timing, technique and the most accurate of all. You can hear the different approach. Moon and Mitchell are more towards melodic improvisation and Bonham and Pace are more towards building their solo with patterns. I like more the melodic approach personally, I feel it's more expressive. Let's go to check out some isolated drum tracks. This is Ian Pace playing Burn by Deep Purple. Solid. Fast. Yeah, it's a very technical playing. Now let's hear Keith Moon playing Won't Get Full Again by The Who. Very powerful sound. You can feel the energy. Yeah, good timing and the sound is really powerful. Remember this aspect because later we're gonna talk about this. Okay, this is Mitch Mitchell playing Purple Haze with Jimi Hendrix. There is a huge reverb actually. A lot of uh, jazz vocabulary. Yeah, the, there is a, a big ambient, like probably they are recording in a big room, but actually the touch is not that uh, strong. The, the power is not as much as Keith Moon playing before. Alright, and now John Bonham playing a whole lot of love with Led Zeppelin. The sound is colossal. I mean, it's not very sharp, I should say, but the sound is very powerful. That's, that's really huge. It's really, really huge. And keep in mind this because we're going to talk about this soon. All right, let's compare more in detail the character sheet of these four drummers. We can see they are all pretty solid on timing, but eventually for Bonham, it's a little bit of an issue. And 
technique, definitely Jan Pace and John Bonham, their strongest in this skill. Structure, okay, they are all pretty much solid. They all play odd meters and they all mix up pretty frequently triplets with 16th and sextuplet in different subdivisions. No one is a specialist about this, but they are all pretty solid. Okay, reading is quite funny to see that no one basically was able to sight read and they are all pretty good improvisers. I eventually would say that Keith Moon and Mitch Mitchell have a little bit of a spark more. About coordination, definitely the most skilled is John Bonham, but the others are quite good too. Time to assign the first of these four prizes. The skills champion is Ian Pace. You can hear clearly in his drum solo the sheer speed and precision he was playing. Uh, his timing and technique are really solid and at the end of the day these two skills are very important for drumming. We can also assign the second prize, the Groove Master. We just heard the isolated tracks and I let you notice the power of the sound of Keith Moon and John Bonham. Of course, Groove is a, an alchemy uh, generated by the combination of all the skills basically but you can uh, hear that in rock music a huge sound with uh, these hard-hitting drummers like Keith Moon and John Bonham is giving the edge basically so that's definitely their prize and in this case is I would say both of them they are top level so they will share this prize. Now let's talk about creativity. I'm gonna perform a few drum parts which are particularly interesting. The first one is Full in the Rain by Led Zeppelin. Here John Bonham is introducing rock music, the famous Purdy Halftime Shuffle. Another iconic song of Bonham's work is Good Times, Bad Times, with this very recognizable drum part, which is completely shaping the whole song. Now let's check Ted the Mechanic by Deep Purple. This is representative of the way Ian Pace was trying to integrate swing feel into rock music. And this is Fireball, a very good example of a song pretty much shaped by the drum part. This is Tone Free by Jimi Hendrix with a very peculiar drum part by Mitch Mitchell. And this is Fire, also by Jimi Hendrix. Here notice how Mitch Mitchell is pioneering drum and bass and jungle grooves, which were uh, invented basically at the end of the 80s. And this song was recorded in 1967, so quite a lot earlier. About Keith Moon drumming, I like how he is using toms to create grooves and colors. Here is Who Are You? And this is another The Who song, Bargain. Here notice how Moon is combining bass drum 
and toms in his fields. He was not that common before him in rock drums. Okay, we can clearly see that Jan Pace is a pretty straightforward drummer. Mitch Mitchell is creating an interesting alchemy with the band, but not so much into arranging in a peculiar way his own parts. Keith Moon is a very creative drummer and he's shaping pretty much uh, the music of the Who. But here the master and the creative weeds are prized goes to John Bonham because his arrangement, his vision, his drum parts are really very much influencing the composition process of Led Zeppelin. And the last prize to assign is the one about interplay, which is the way musicians interact, especially during improvised part. For example, during a guitar solo, the way the drummer is supporting the guitarist, shaping helping shape the music and create a direction or hold and give energy to the soloist. I selected a few improvisation parts of live shows. Let's start with Smoke on the Water by Deep Purple. You can hear that Ian Pace is really holding the band together, giving a powerful beat and energetic support, but not as much as interacting with the soloist. Let's hear Stairway to Heaven by Led Zeppelin. Quite a lot similar approach to Ian Pace, John Bonham is also giving the energy, interacting a bit more with some feels, but basically is keeping the structure locked and leaving the soloist to express himself. Let's hear Won't Get Full again by The Who. Again, solid support, a bit of interaction, but not really a true interplay. Let's hear now Voodoo Child by Jimi Hendrix. Okay, here the approach is quite a lot different. Mitch Mitchell is shaping his drumming, his following some ideas of the guitar player or even the bass player, they are creating, uh, they're composing on the spot. And that's something that really highlighted the vision and the music of Jimi Hendrix. So the Interplay Guru Prize go to Mitch Mitchell. Okay, so at the end of the day, if we want to crown one of these four drummers, in my opinion, is John Bonham. His creativity and his huge sound shaped a lot uh, the Japanese music and he was probably the most influent rock drummer. Here you can watch the videos I made for each one of these four drummers with some interesting information like Influence Tree and a lot of stats. And here you can have fun with my creative covers. If you like the video please leave a thumb up. Pietro Valente out!